Well, hey guys, many of you have tagged me recently in some posts on TikTok about retinols where the creators are giving out some interesting information that I thought I might debunk in today's video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea and I am a board certified dermatologist. So the myth that I keep seeing is that retinols are photosensitizing and that is a myth. But first of all, what is a retinol? Retinol is actually a family of ingredients. It's kind of an umbrella term for a variety of different ingredients that you either apply to the skin or you take by mouth from a prescription. And these ingredients include retinol serums that you might buy in the drugstore. They include prescription retinoid creams and gels like tretinoin, tazeratine, and they include medications that you take by mouth like Accutane. And they have many, many benefits for the skin. They have anti-aging benefits. They can improve collagen synthesis in the deeper layers of the skin, remove sun damage, smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. The, the topicals and Accutane are acne treatments as well. So they're good for acne. So are these ingredients photosensitizing? They're not. In the true sense of the word photosensitizing, they're not. They actually have been shown and are well established to help your skin resist some of the damage that occurs upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Now, of course, you need to wear sunscreen and protect your skin from the sun. Retinoid doesn't, you know, protect you from the sun in that sense, but in conjunction with sun protection, retinoids can mitigate some of the damage that happens in your skin upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Specifically, they can inhibit the activation of that enzyme family matrix metalloproteinases that destroy collagen. And retinoids can also remove sun damaged skin cells, but they don't sensitize your skin to the sun or to UV rays from the sun. People throw around the term photosensitivity a lot, but it's important to understand what exactly that means. Photosensitivity is a type of skin reaction that happens upon exposure to UV rays. There are actually two main kind of categories of photosensitivity. There's phototoxicity, and there's photoallergy. And so you can develop a phototoxicity to an ingredient that you put on your skin or that is taken by mouth into your body. Or you can develop a photoallergy to an ingredient that you put on your skin or that is taken up by the body. So let's break those two down a little bit. What is phototoxicity? Phototoxicity happens as a result of direct cellular and tissue injury upon exposure of the phototoxin to UV rays. So it's in your skin, you go out, you're exposed to UV, or you're sitting by a window and UVA rays come in through the window glass and it causes a reaction in the skin that results directly in cell damage and tissue damage. Phototoxicity can happen in anyone provided they are exposed to said phototoxin and UV. It's that combination of the two that leads to the reaction. Phototoxicity develops a few hours after you are exposed to UV. Phototoxicity can happen because ingredients touch your skin and you are exposed to UV, or it can happen because you ingest ingredients that are phototoxic and they localize to the skin or metabolites of them localize to the skin. And upon exposure to UV, you develop phototoxicity. A classic example of a phototoxic eruption is something called phytophotodermatitis. It can happen if you get lime juice on your skin. It's basically from compounds in certain plants that when you go in the sun after those, those compounds have touched the skin, it causes a blistering rash. Lots of medications can cause phototoxicity. Certain antibiotics can cause an exaggerated sunburn when you go out in the sun or when you sit by a window if you are taking them. So that's phototoxicity. Let's talk about photoallergy, the other type of photosensitivity. This is different in that it doesn't happen to everyone. It requires you to become sensitized to the ingredient either that you put on your skin or that you consume by mouth and it involves your immune system, whereas phototoxicity does not. Phototoxicity is just a toxic reaction causing destruction to tissues. Photoallergy involves your immune system causing a reaction in the skin. It's called a photoallergy because the UV rays convert the ingredient or metabolite to the allergen. Meaning if you don't see, if your skin is not exposed to UV, then the ingredient or metabolite is not a problem. It's only a problem when UV rays hit the skin and convert it to the allergen that you have become sensitized to. And again, it doesn't happen to everybody, just in those who have become sensitized to the ingredient. And there are some ingredients and medications that are common offenders 
for people becoming sensitized to and subsequently developing a photo allergy. So when we're thinking about ingredients that come in contact with the skin and you say the word photosensitizing, you're either talking about it as a phototoxin or a photoallergen. And guess what? Retinols are neither of those things. There's no UV induced activation of the drug, meaning you put retinoid on and you go out in the sun and it doesn't activate it into an allergen or a toxin. We do photo testing of patients who are on oral retinoids like Accutane or Soriotane or of patients who are putting retinoids on the skin, they have perfectly normal photo testing. Uh, there's no evidence of any phototoxicity or photoallergy to these ingredients. So to be clear, retinoids are not photosensitizing. So why do we keep hearing that they are? And in fact, if you read the package insert of tretinoin, it speaks to being careful in the sun and not using it with other photosensitizing things. So why is that in there? In the very beginning, when tretinoin was first in use, people did think that it caused people to be more sensitive to the sun. But in reality, what we learned is that as you guys know, if you've ever used tretinoin or any other form of topical vitamin A, when you first start using it, it causes a lot of irritation because it starts thinning out the dead stuff on the top of your skin. And as it does that, you develop irritation. And the degree of irritation that you develop can vary from person to person. If you have a lot of pre-existing sun damage on your skin, it's gonna be more severe, particularly in those areas, because it's kind of cutting through a lot of noise on the top of your skin. And that irritation makes you very sensitive to things that you put on your skin and to environmental exposures. And that includes wind, cold temperatures, and sun. But it's not that your skin has been photosensitized. So your skin can be a little bit more sensitive when you go out in the sun or exposed to cold or wind. But it's not because the drug has created a toxic effect upon exposure to UV, and it's not because you have developed an allergy. So it's not a true photosensitivity, meaning the threshold amount of UV rays that you have to come in contact with to begin to cause damage to your skin is not changed by the use of topical retinoids. So it sounds really technical, but it is an important distinction to make. And in the beginning, when we were first using retinoids, um, you know, that was the idea that, yeah, maybe they're photosensitizing, but research later has shown that they are not in fact photosensitizing. Another reason why people will feel more sensitivity at when using retinoids is because they thin out the dead layer on the top of the skin. That's a good thing, but in doing so, it allows for more easy penetration of ingredients that may be irritating and it allows sun UV rays to penetrate the skin in a more even fashion, but it doesn't actually change your skin's sensitivity to UV rays. It's a small but important distinction. So this brings me to kind of the next issue that I see, idea that I see perpetuated a lot online that's false, is that people think now because it is, because they think wrongly that it is photosensitizing, they also think that they need to wash it off in the morning. If you're using a retinol the night before and then cleansing with water, just water, the morning after, you're opening yourself up to photo damage, redness, and pigmentation. Water is not gonna thoroughly remove your retinol. And you don't need to wash tretinoin or any other type of retinol off the following morning. So I've seen some recent posts saying, don't use water to only to wash your face in the morning because it's not gonna wash off your retinol. And that's not true at all. <laughs> um, you don't need to be washing off retinol. The way retinols work is they get into the skin, they bind to receptors, so they get into your skin, they bind to receptors to change gene expression. So you can't wash that off, first of all. So it, you know, it doesn't behoove you to, to wash off. What are you washing off? You can't change what has already been occurring. And that, that's the desired outcome uh, of retinoids, by the way. And washing the face off in the morning, it's not gonna minimize irritation. If anything, washing the face the following morning is gonna just lead itself to more irritation because when you wash, whether it be with water or a, a gentle cleanser, you do disrupt your moisture barrier and that does lead to more dryness, which can worsen the irritation that you experience in the beginning. So if anything, in the first few weeks, it's prudent to try to not even wash your face at all, including water only, 
when you use retinoid. I mean, it's up to you if you wanna do that or not, but it can help cut down on the irritation because you're just not, you know, there's just no need to necessarily be washing your face twice a day. Um, and so to wash it first thing in the morning in an effort to remove the tretinoin, there's no reason to do that. It doesn't make sense. You're not removing the tretinoin. You're just removing some of your natural moisture factors that help you handle the irritating side effects of retinoids. A lot of people might be confused and think, well, why is it that we're always told to put retinol or tretinoin on at night then if it's not photosensitizing? The reason is that many forms of topical vitamin A are sensitive themselves to UV and degrade upon it UV exposure, rendering them ineffective. Some forms of tretinoin are photosensitive, but it, they don't, it doesn't make you photosensitive. So that is why you are told to put it on at nighttime. That being said, with innovation of topical uh, vitamin A derivatives, many forms are actually stable in the presence of UV and are more than fine to actually use in the morning. As a matter of fact, adapalene, brand name Differin, can be used in the daytime. It doesn't make your skin more sensitive and adapalene, in contrast to tretinoin, is not photosensitive. So you can safely put that on technically during the day. So that's why I would tell you to put it on at night. And I also wanted to point out, you know, I always get questions, especially, you know, coming up on spring break, which can't get here soon enough. I'm sure for some of you who live in cold climates or, you know, with summer vacation, people always reach out to me and ask, hey, I'm gonna go on vacation. How soon before going, you know, to the beach or to Cancun or whatever, should I stop my retinoid? And there's no reason to do that. You know, it's not photosensitizing. It's not a, gonna cause a phototoxicity. Um, and so there's no reason to think about it that way. In fact, having the retinoid there while you go on vacation, provided you are protecting your skin from the sun and you're not you know, staying out too long, well, it's gonna actually help lessen the overall burden of damage that UV causes to your skin. So if anything, you know, you want to be using it while you are on a beach vacation. So to clarify, no, retinols are not photosensitizing. No, you don't have to wash them off the following morning. Number three, the reason you are told to apply retinol at night is because some forms of topical vitamin A are photosensitive, but they are not photos, they don't make you photosensitive, they're photosensitive. So we tell you to apply them at night. And number four, you do not need to concern yourself with stopping retinol or retinoid before a like beach vacation. They are not gonna, they're not gonna put you at risk for a sunburn per se. It's you going out and spending too much time in the sun that's gonna put you at risk for sun damage. So as a reminder, when it comes to protecting your skin from the sun, you need to wear sunscreen, reapply it every two hours while you are outdoors, and you need to rely on things like sun protective uh, clothing, hats, umbrellas, and just don't stay out in the sun all day. That's not good for your skin. Um, so I hope this video was helpful and kind of clarifying some common myths and misconceptions. And on the end slate, I'm gonna put a video of some common retinol myths that I debunk. So check that out if you are new to using a retinol or a prescription, you know, tretinoin or tazeratine. So check that out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.